Hello guys. In this video, we'll take up the next part of the secondary uh, growth in the dicot stem. That is the activity of the cord cambium. We have seen the activity of the vascular cambium in the previous video. So before watching this video, please uh, go back to the previous video that is the activity of the vascular cam cambium and then come to the activity of the cord cambium. We know that vascular cambium activity so that was seen in the region of that was seen in the vascular region is it it now the activity of the cork cambium is seen in the region of the cortex so this is the region of the cortex is it it so here the cortex is actually made up of the cortex is made up of parenchyma majorly now a few cells of parenchyma okay a few cells so there will be a few layers here. So one or two layers, a couple of layers of the parenchyma will get converted into the meristematic cells. Here, the secondary growth, we are speaking about the secondary growth that takes place in the region of the cork K, that takes place in the region of the cortex due to the activity of the cork cambium. So how exactly the cork cambium is being formed? That is, the cork cambium is formed by the activity or by the conversion of the parenchyma cells. So, I am just drawing only one line of the parenchyma. This one line of the parenchyma I am taking here. So, I am just drawing a line of parenchyma. Only a few cells I am drawing here. Okay, this is a parenchyma cell which I have shifted from, from here to here. Now, this parenchyma cell will now convert into the meristematic cells. When they convert into the meristematic cells, so that movement we call this layer as cork cambium. The parenchyma cells which are converted into the into the meristematic cells are called as the or that layer is called as the cork cambium. So this cork cambium is also called as phallogen. This is called as phallogen. Now what does meristematic cells do or what does cambium do? They have the capacity of the active division. It means that this particular layer will start producing new cells on the outer side as well as on the inner side. See, here we have this layer. Now, these layers will start producing the cells on the outer side as well as on the inner side. New cells are being produced. The cells which are being produced on the outer side, outer to the cork cambium, also the new cells will start getting produced like this. These are a couple of layers of the new cells which are being produced on the outer side. And these are a few layers which are being produced on the inner side of the cork cambium. Now, the cells which are produced on the outer side, the cells which are produced on the outer side, these are called as the cork. The layer is called as the cork and this is also called as the phallum. Now, the cells which are produced on the inner side, these cells, they are called as secondary, secondary cortex, which is also called as Phalloderm, which is also called as phalloderm. So now what happens? On the inner side also the new cells are formed. On the outer side also the new cells are formed. Now, after the, after the synthesis of these cells, so how about the other cells which are present above the, this particular parenchyma layer and below the particular parenchyma layer? The cells which are below here, they will also be slightly pushed down and the cells which are above, for example, we are speaking about the parenchyma layer here, right? So above parenchyma layer, what do we have? We have colenchyma, isn't it? So let's draw a couple of colenchyma here. Okay, 
these are the colon thigh muscles with no intercellular spaces guys because there is a deposition of the cellulose hemicellulose and pectin majorly the pectin now we have the uh, colon thigh muscles here and above this we also have the layer of epidermis so just a layer of the epidermis now See what has happened because of the formation of this new layer, because of the formation of this cork layer, there is a pressure which has been built up because the area is now increasing, isn't it? Previously, the area was only this much but now because of the addition of few more layers of the cork here, there is a pressure which has been applied above, above the layers of the cork. And as well as there is a formation of the secondary cortex also and because of this also or some amount of pressure is being applied down but anyways greater amount of pressure is applied above because this because the cell has to, because the plant has to now grow in the wood isn't it so there is more amount of the the pressure which has been applied applied on the outer side now what happens here above the cork where we have these colon chyma cells that Actually, there will be deposition of the suede. The cells, a few cells here at the edges. Few cells here at the edges will be having the deposition of the suede. Now, since there is deposition of the suede, what, what, is, what has happened is the water is not able to move. And before that, here, this because of the extra pressure, so gradually number of layers of this cork is getting increased and this is pushing up. When it is getting pushed up, so at that time what happens? Here, because there is a some amount of the suberin which is deposited, here gradually the colon chyma cells are being pushed up like this. Again, colon chyma, colon chyma, and colon chyma. So now what happens, the, the distance between the xylem which is present here and the colon chyma which is present here will be increased. Due to the increase in the distance of this particular xylem and the colon chyma, water movement will actually become slow. Water movement will actually become slow as well as because now there is all superior deposition here, gradually the water movement to these cells which are adjoining these superior deposited cells will also now gradually decline. So here and all there is no water now which has been reaching there and since there is no water reaching here these cells will start dying because there is no water because of the superior and there is a more, there's a more distance here between the xylem and these cells. So gradually these cells will start dying like this. This is how the cells start dying and at the same time because of the pressure which is getting applied the here the cells will start getting ruptured. Epidermis almost will be ruptured and at some point of time you can actually see a rupturing like this which can be clearly seen in the form of a pore which is called as lenticles. On the stem we get to see the lenticles. How are the lenticles formed? So this is how the lenticles are being formed. So because of the superior deposition water is not able to move up and hence the cells at the edges will start dying off and at the same time because of the pressure applied on the outer side now the cells which are above the cork will will start get, will start uh, having or will start developing a pressure in themselves and they start getting ruptured when they rupture there's a small hole or there's a small a whole lying structure which has been formed and that is called as the lenticle okay this is called as the lenticle now because there are more number of layers which are formed, definitely the width has to be increased, isn't it? When the width increases, that is called as the secondary growth in the dicostum. Now, this is how the cork KPM will cut off the new cells on both the sides or in the region of the cortex. So, below this particular phylogen, what do you, what do we have? Here we have the pericycle, isn't it? So, now again, same, we have the pericycle cells here. 
these are the cells of the pericycle and after the pericycle we again have the phloem i'm just drawing one layer of each or two layers phloem after the phloem next we have the cambium these are the cambium cells and then we have the xylem we have the xylem so now here the area in the cortex is being increased isn't it so since the area in the cortex is being increased that, that can be taken as a secondary group hence we say that in the step secondary growth takes place in the two regions one is a vascular region which is due to the activity of the vascular cambium another one is a cortex region which is due to the activity of the cork cambium and how is this cork form or cork cambium form that is because the parenchyma cells will get converted into the meristematic cells now the layers which are above the vascular cambium so this is a region of the vascular cambium so now the regions above the vascular cambium that is this is the phloem see phloem here which we have drawn was the primary phloem so after the secondary growth of vascular region we had got the secondary phloem and the primary phloem but that primary phloem had crushed off because of the secondary growth so a small amount of secondary phloem has remained primary phloem and secondary phloem both were actually crushed off but somehow a small amount of secondary phloem is still remaining now hence the one which we have drawn here is the secondary phloem and this is pericycle and then after the pericycle this region this is the secondary cortex secondary cortex and then this is the cork cambium cork cambium above the cork cambium we have a region of the cork and then after the cork here we have uh, some cells of the parenchyma however these cells are also being included so all the layers above the vascular cambium above the vascular cambium whatever cells are there all cells together okay including the secondary phloem all cells above the vascular cambium together will constitute the bark very very important guys many a times this question is being asked in the neat so which all layers are being included in the in the bark we don't include the primary phloem in the bark this should be very clear there is only secondary phloem which is included because primary phloem will be crushed off during the secondary growth in the vascular region so no sec no primary phloem and xylem is not included only from the secondary phloem pericycle secondary cortex cambium cork uh, cork cambium and the cork only these many regions are being included and all together the layers above the vascular cambium will be constituted as the bark so as a result of secondary growth in the dicot stem what all new structures are formed here one is the formation of the bark isn't it bark is being formed and then the lenticles are formed so what is the use of the lenticle lenticles they are used in the gaseous exchange they are used in the exchange of the gases okay then this bark can be differentiated into two types one is a early bark and another one is a late bark early bark and the late bark here the bark which is being formed in the early stages of the secondary growth is called as the early bark and the bark which is being formed in the later stage of stages of the secondary growth is called as the late bark so early bark and the late bark one difference you have to note here is the early bark this is usually slight softer in nature and later late bark is quite hard in nature this is one which you have to know here and then one more important term which you have to remember here is the periderm 
peridum many a times it is been asked what is a peridum so peridum is a combination of the phelum phelum plus phelogen plus phelodum plus phelodum together will give a peridum so peridum is equal to phelum phelogen and phelodum that is the cork cork cambium and the secondary cortex together will give rise to peridum so this is about the secondary growth in the region of the cortex by the activity of the cork cambium so remember the dicot stem in the dicot stem the secondary growth takes place in two regions one is the region of the one is the vascular region another one is a cortex region in the vascular region the secondary growth is because of the vascular cambium and in the cortex region the secondary growth is due to the activity of the cork cambium so in the next we will take up the monocot stem guys now we will see about the monocot stem the structure which i have written here is the monocot stem so here in the monocot stem the outermost layer is the epidermis i am coming to the epidermis here the epidermis these are made up of barrel shaped cells they are made up of barrel shaped cells and there is a thick cuticle which is present here cuticle is present cuticle present what you have to remember here is the epidermal hairs that is the trichomes are absent epidermal hairs or trichomes or trichomes are absent they are absent in case of the dicot stem we had seen the presence of the epidermal hairs or the trichomes but here the epidermal hairs or the trichomes are absent next coming to the next region that is the cortex region so here we have epidermis and then the hypodermis so from the or just below the hypodermis we have the cortex region but here there is no differentiation there is no differentiation into or uh, like how exactly the cortex region has been differentiated into the endodermis pericycle and all so there is no differentiation into endodermis pericycle pericycle and etc all that is present in the cortex is parenchyma parenchyma ground tissue parenchyma ground tissue so here there is no differentiation into the uh, there is or there is no differentiation of the cortex region into the endodermis pericycle and etc all that is present here is the parenchyma cells in the ground tissue okay so here all this is parenchyma only all this is filled with the parenchyma cells just epidermis hypodermis and this complete ground tissue it is made up of the parenchyma then the next region is the vascular region which is very very important here here the vascular bundle every vascular bundle is made up of a layer of the bundle sheath every every single vascular bundle okay that is made up of a sheath which is called as the bundle sheath and this bundle sheath is made up of sclerenchyma the bundle sheath is made up of the sclerenchyma and there are numerous vascular bundles which are being present however towards the periphery okay towards the periphery for example if this is the vascular region altogether and here 
towards the periphery wherever we have the wherever we have these vascular bundles so these vascular bundles are quite smaller as compared to the one which is present towards the center so if the one present towards the center are quite bigger and they are lesser in number whereas the one which are present towards the periphery they are smaller and more in the number so smaller i more vascular bundles towards periphery towards periphery now nature of the vascular bundles the, the vascular bundles are conjoint and closed so they are conjoint and closed vascular bundles within the vascular bundles there are some water cavities present water cavities water cavities are present within the vascular bundles and one thing which you have to remember here and very very important is phloem phloem parenchyma is absent very very important it's been asked many a times in the question papers so remember the phloem parenchyma is absent in the monocot stem so this is about the monocot stem we have already seen the dicot stem so it seems to be quite easy to understand the monocot stem but however there are minor differences which you have to note so one more difference is the phloem parenchyma which is absent in the monocot stem and present in the dicot stem and the second one here is there is no differentiation of the ground tissue in the monocot stem whereas in case of the dicot stem there is a proper and a conspicuous differentiation of the cortex region in the dicot stem this you have to remember and here the arrangement of the vascular bundles is again one difference which you have to note it very much and one more important difference is the absence of the trichomes or the epidermal plates so these are the major four differences which you have to note so this is all about the monocot stem so in the next video we'll come up with the leaf that is dicot leaf as well as the monocot leaf thank you